Hey guys, welcome back to Homestead Prepping and Survival. Today, I've done a couple of little video clips for you outside, and uh, I'm going to give you an update on the dog that we rescued from starving to death off the dirt road, and uh, give you an update on the chickens, and then I'm going to walk you around, you know, the part around my storage buildings and my little mini barn and all that stuff, and, and go over some things that I'm that I've been working on and some of them I've let go way too long and you know but I want to be real with you like I always tell you I'm gonna to try to be honest with you so I'm gonna take you out there and I'm just gonna show you around the things that I've been working on and things I'm planning on doing and hopefully motivate you and get you some ideas going to what you can do to help you be better prepared and you know of course this is not everything you know I've done videos over food and I'll be doing more of those I've done videos over fire, uh, firearms and ammunition. I've done videos over a lot of different things, but this is kind of just an in general run through the things I've got outside projects that I want to get done and things that I've started and not finished and so on. But uh, I'm going to run you through that and kind of show you around a little bit. And no, you'll see this is live. I didn't get out there and clean it up and make it all pretty and and you know weed eat and try to try to get it perfect for a camera this is real life way it's sitting out there right now i should be embarrassed about it but you know what i've told you before it's just me so if i don't hire somebody to help me do it i just don't have the time nor the energy to get out there and do everything by myself as in a timely manner the way i'd like to but the most important thing about prepping is to keep on prepping so every day every week try to do something little to help you be better prepared for the next day and if you continue to do that then you will make progress in over a month or two months or six months and year you know as time progresses you're going to look back and go wow i've got a lot of stuff accomplished and that's the goal you're you know there's a lot of people like me that will start 15 different projects and never finish and I, I'd like to finish some of them, but usually by the time I finish, uh, you know, or working on one and trying to finish it up, I end up going, okay, now I need to do this. So that creates another problem or another project for me to do. But anyway, guys, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and uh, share the channel when you can. It helps me grow tremendously. So I'm going to put this together for you and... I'm going to be honest, I've already got the next two videos done that are going to be coming out live to y'all. I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and do one tonight, which is Friday night, April Fools. Um, I'm not fooling you. I'm going to probably, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to, because <laughs> y'all will know by the time this video comes out whether it worked or not, but I'm going to try to use my hotspot off my phone which is all the internet i have here where i live and and try to get one to upload if i can get it done in a couple of hours <clears throat> so i'm gonna try to upload one tonight and let it just go ahead and go live and kind of throw an extra one out there and then when i get back to work monday i'll do what i normally do which is upload another one for monday and let it post and you know this one will be done so this will probably be next thursdays which is you know seven days from now so that's if i don't get another one done this weekend and decide to throw another extra one out there but i don't want to get too far ahead on videos and not publish them because then i'm going to be doing some and you're going to see um videos and i see this on some other channels it's like they save videos for when they're not available or not able to do one and they'll save this one and share it when they're you know not exactly opportune time for them to make one i don't want to get too far ahead so i'm going to go ahead and post one tonight or at least try and then i'll have one post monday on my normal schedule and i may even have another one done this weekend where i'll post um before then or whatever but i've got at least got three more if not four to go so 
get y'all caught up with actual times. But anyway, guys, I do appreciate it. Let's get into the video. I apologize that when I first started this, I was out there trying to give you an update on the dog, and you'll see I, I used my phone, so I was holding it upright, and you got the long, skinny picture. And uh, when I finished doing that, I went, oh, Lord. Okay, so let me turn it off and flip it. It won't let me flip while I'm actually using it. So and then I'll splice these together and make one. Guys, I appreciate you. Y'all remember the two things I always tell you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Be safe. Be prepared. There you go, guys. This is what he does all day. He pulls against that cable and bounces back. It's like it's not hurting him at all. He don't care. He uses that thing like a trampoline for a kid. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. He's actually broke two cables already. And just to let y'all know, I'm going to show you in a second. Look how, look, look how much fatter he is. That ain't just ate a bunch and full. That's one happy puppy. I got home yesterday. He had broke the cable and he was at the back door. Then when I went inside to get the new cable I had already bought, he was trying his best to get in the house. Makes me feel like he was somebody's house dog at some point. But look how happy this puppy is. And fat he's getting. You don't see a backbone at all. He's all muscle and fat. Plenty of fresh water. Plenty of food. I'm trying to teach him to put his feet up here so I can love on him. There we go. There we go. There we go. Right, calm down. Calm down. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> he drinks a lot of water. But look how healthy he is. Uh -uh. That's enough. Don't jump on me. I'm going to tell you, I got to get some clippers. His claws are sharp. He's drew blood several times on me. And almost got my granddaughter. So, I know the videos. Oh my goodness. Up and down. Let me stop it and start it back sideways. I should have turned it. Alright, so. We just looked at him. Look at him. He's full of it. And there she is. My tag along. She's mad. I haven't fed her yet. <coughs> I actually forgot. I apologize. I had other things I was doing. So. Filled up their feeder yesterday and put some more hay on the ground. Because they like to scratch it. So I've got the four biddies inside. I moved them from the toad I use as a brooder to uh, that kennel that I put the chicken wire on so that they've got more room they're getting more a little bit older so they can monitor and regulate their own temperatures or whatever but you notice look I haven't cut the grass behind it see how tall it is over here I know it's hard to see in the camera but I'll show y'all look at the height difference in this grass and this grass and I don't let them out every day but they sure are knocking it out pretty quick I'm actually thinking of making this run area about four times as big as it is now but I also want to make the chicken pen bigger but the price of lumber is preventing me from doing that so and there's my tag along and I don't know if I don't think I've ever showed you all this but there's the four barrels 55 gallon food grade barrels that I keep stored with fresh potable water and of course the water containers over here and this is just leftover stuff that I need to clean up but this is a little play area that my friend and I created and, and uh, I know I need to do a lot more with it but that thing that old horse there they like to swing on it, especially the little ones and I added chain to it the other day to get it down low enough for them so anyway the grandkids like it it gives them something to do and it's very inexpensive it was on that big metal frame I've got out on the range and uh, you know think about you guys I know a lot of your families with children have play sets for the kids but you really do need to think about um, having something for the kids to do 
besides school and all of that. And then I had a buddy that gave me these rain catchment barrels. And I have not cleaned them up and set them up because I haven't put gutters on my house. You know, ten and a half years. And I'm almost due for it. And then, of course, my tractor. Uh, got to replace the battery, which I've already got two other batteries over here. And then um, I cleaned the carburetor and I forgot to put the main gasket back on it. So it's not wanting to run right. So I'm going to have to take it back off, clean it again, put that gasket on it. And, uh, you know, the seat, I keep it flipped upside down just because I don't want the wasps to build nest under it. But anyway, the old tractor has been a good tractor to me since I bought it. So anyway, I like that. I know junk. And what you see here is a metal box that I made out of just some galvanized metal. And typically what I was doing was I had this to a ground wire connected to a ground rod up by the corner of my house it's where i kept my first generator under this so it was protected up under it and uh it didn't really work out well that the motor and things started to have corrosion issues being under there so i need to create one out of hardware cloth because that will protect it from what i'm researched and been told just as well as this solid metal box so and that'll let air flow through so the corrosion doesn't happen and all that. So that'll be coming hopefully in the near future. And of course, there's my Kubota mower. All right, so we got to get a battery for it. I'm having to jump it off every time I use it, but it cranks and runs fine. It's just the batteries and got old. So then I've got some little styrofoam that was left over for some projects. And I don't know. Let me go around here. I'm going to There's look up under there. There's four grill size propane bottles there and my grill runs off my big tank so that's my backup to my backup and then i've got all these cans and yes i've got a yellow one somewhere um don't know where it went but i've got a blue one over there doesn't matter blue is normally for kerosene yellow is normally for diesel and red is for gasoline um and i do have a diesel backhoe my tractor's gas so it's at my brother's farm where my backhoe is and it's full of fuel and I try to keep the backhoe full. It'll go a long time off of a six gallon tank is what it has. So, and then the boat tank there, I keep right here, I keep pre-mixed fuel in there. So I've got gasoline, non-ethanol gasoline in there with the oil mixture to run things like the boat or weed eaters and all of that. And I used to hose I've got a hose without an end on it that I put on there and just squeeze the bulb and I can fill up my weed eaters or any chainsaws, whatever from that with just a few pumps on that bulb. So it makes it really simple. And then I bought this PVC years ago. And of course I bought a 20 foot piece and this is only a five foot piece standing up. I just got this 10 foot one. So let's talk about this. Um, it, I bought it and cut it into four pieces and bought the caps to go on each end so I can create a cache and you can store things in there, food, weapons, ammo, water, water filter, whatever you decide you want to put in that cache for along your bug out route or in my case, um, just in case my, my homestead here is overrun and we ran off, I will have the locations where I buried these pieces of pipe and bury them close to straight up and down as you can because it's less likely to be found by a metal detector and uh anyway that's a really good thing to do but that pipe is very expensive um but if you can afford to do that especially if you've got to bug out for a long distance to have caches along the way is a good idea and then i've got you know uh, like this gas powered and i've got the carburetor in in my barn in there because i need to have it rebuilt but um this gas powered auger and then another weed eater that i don't use that i need to get serviced and then hand tools like the little garden rake up there and what you see in that little pump that little black thing there with the clear braided hose that's actually a pump that works with gasoline or diesel whichever you want to do and i stick that down into a 55 gallon drum or whatever tank i've got bulk fuel in and i can pump that and pump it into smaller containers or vehicles if i need to and that's what i use it for so but you see there's one two three four five cans there 
that one's full. I don't know if you can see the yeah, you can see it shaking. It's at the five gallon mark. This one, this one are empty. These two are empty. Well, actually, this one's got a little bit in it, but that's because I've been using out of it. And then my nephew just gave me this one, so it's empty. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That blue one's full of gas as well. Seven, eight, nine, ten five gallon containers. Um, plus the diesel one I've got at my brother's. And then the six gallon gas tank there for the boat that has the premixed in there plus the extra propane. So, you know, unless you've got a proper way of storing gasoline and you're storing it, you know, non ethanol and such, so it gives you less problems, this is a good way to do it. But rotate through your fuel. And I do put fuel stable in mine, but I really haven't been able to tell that it makes a big difference. But I know I've got some other tools laying on here, but I want to show y'all, excuse me, um, this is that mower that I was talking to y'all about in an other video a week or so ago. And it's one of those mowers, you know, when you push it, it turns these blades and cuts. And it actually works pretty well. Um, but the thing about them is you don't want to let that grass get knee high. It doesn't work well for tall grass. It works pretty good if you can keep that grass maintained. But if you ever let it get ahead of you, then it's really hard for this to cut it and, and get it down to where you want it to be. So, um, I suggest if you can get one of those, I think I paid 130 or 140 for that. Um, it's only been used a couple of times, but um you know if you can get one of those and have it put up to where it's taken care of then that's a good idea because it's no fuel involved other than someone pushing it and then of course i got this another 10 foot piece of pipe with the screw on cap and the glue on i'm gonna cut this like i did the other one into five foot pieces i might do three or three and a half foot or something like that and do three pipes out of it um because you can still put a lot of stuff in there so that's just something that I came across. It was actually, we was cleaning up at the old shop. You know, we moved to a new building January, end of December. And uh, we was hitting, my brother was going to throw this thing away. I'm like, mm -mm, that's a couple hundred dollars worth of PVC. I'm taking that to the house. So that's where, how it got to my house. And then I've got a little old compressor here that I've had for, I don't know, 20 plus years. And it's been a really good air compressor to me. The tank finally rusted out enough. The motor and the pressure switch I put on there and all works great. So I'm saving that just in case I do find another tank that's good. And then here is my um, Gen Generac 5500 watt generator. And it's, uh, of course, it's pure sine wave, but it's also got 240 volt output so i can run my entire property of this now i cannot run the air conditioner in that building i can't run all three in my house the one in the camper the one in this building and the one in the classroom out on the range i can't run all those air conditioners at one time when i'm running off my solar or the generator but i'm not worried about that when crap hits the fan um what i'm more concerned with is if it's really hot to cool down that bedroom or to cool that kitchen down while we're cooking in the worst part of the day you know um i'm not trying to keep everybody at 68 degrees like i do now so just an idea and just so y'all know i don't lie to you you see all these old batteries sitting around this plastic i laid out with the wood bark on there and i've got a bunch stacked up there that's what i started with when it, when i had my solar first get installed i started with 14 of those deep cycle lead acid batteries and they only lasted between three and four years and then they started dropping off going bad and i'm telling you for the amount of money you pay for them and the amount of amp hours you get out of it, which is about 105 on these it's just not worth putting that money into them you need much better batteries um, there's a lot of things I tell you to start out cheap and work your way up, but on solar power, don't do it. Don't waste your money. Save up, get good batteries, get good inverters, and get good solar panels. 
that's it's it's well worth it because you're going to get so much longer lifespan out of it but anyway i just thought i'd do another quick video for y'all um i don't know when i'm going to post this one but I, if some of y'all can tell i you know it's a used metal i don't care i'm going to end up taping it with foil tape and sealing the top anyway but i didn't alter my barn i went under the lip of the metal where it was normally built and i came out with this steel uh, metal for the roof and it gives me room to park things and store up under and i know i need to clean it up but i've got enough metal here to do this side the same way where that is oh my goodness i think it's 12 foot out um this is only eight foot ten that i built it originally with so i'm gonna tear this down and i'm gonna reframe and come out even further see how bushes have gotten away from me um so i'm planning on doing that on this side as well so i can park my backhoe and store other things on this side well here's the problem and i'm gonna walk through there and show you because i haven't cleaned this mess up told y'all i'm honest with y'all i'm just showing you the real deal so this push mower i had a guy clean the carburetor and tune it up i don't use it but it should be ready to go if i need it see that leaning i did some tongue and groove flooring that my buddy gave me him and i got out here one day and i built this thing in just a matter of a few hours with a little finish nailer and i never finished but i was trying to do the door for it and all and basically i poured concrete by hand down here and set up bricks here got a steel plate to put on top of that and left the space for this pipe to go from the fire pit over into the smokehouse so it'll be a cold smoke so we can smoke meat now i'm going to have to rebuild this and i know it i shouldn't have let it get away as far as i have but um you know it's very inexpensive if you do it yourself and uh i can basically hang a couple of deer in this thing or a couple of hogs or whatever i need to do to preserve meat and help or at least help make it last longer so um just ideas and then this extra tin that i've got and stuff that's coming off of here and here is going to be out on the classroom for the shelter on the pistol range so i'm not wasting anything i'm repurposing it and uh anyway i had another buddy that tore down a, a big old deck that he had and he brought all the lumber to me and i stacked it out here i've got to go through and get the nails and the screws and stuff out of it and you know cut off the bad parts and get it stored under the shelter so that i've got good lumber there that can be used and then you know i got a burn barrel there where i throw a bunch of old scrap pieces and stuff in um so anyway i'm gonna walk around to this other side and i've shown y'all my water containers over there the ibc totes that are food grade that i've got 275 gallon containers two of them so 550 gallons of fresh water well i had a black one sitting back here just like it that was like a fertilizer or something in it so it wasn't food grade i could not use it for consumable water or potable water but we ended up needing a cage like that at work so i took it to work and we took the plastic out of it and i plan on getting another one it, it sat there for many couple years and that old freezer my son found it somebody was selling it, and it was on their back porch says it still works it just looks like crap well it's been sitting there ever since he brought it um <laughs> i haven't even checked to see if it works i may turn it into a worm bed i don't know but anyway something here that my ex found when we were together years ago is these old steel tables and they just got old doors setting up there as the platform but it's got a few braces under it but these things are heavy i mean two people to move it and it sucks but um i've got a buddy that wants them that does blacksmith i'm hoping he will come get at least one of them if not both of them get them out of my way otherwise they're going to end up out on the range and be put to use out there but um, my overall goal is to have a lean-to shelter off the front side of the, this mini barn, the wider one on each side, so I've got much more storage that way, and then actually come off the back all the way across. And, you know, um, one day, if I live long enough, would be to wrap the sides all the way around with metal so that I'm increasing my EMP protection area. So anyway, I've got a 
long ways to go i'll show y'all there's a little peach tree here and then my pear trees they were covered in blooms a couple of weeks ago um apple trees are just now starting to bud out uh, blueberry bushes have already had some blooms and are starting to grow little tiny blueberries so they're doing okay i had six or eight here and only two made it so i need to replant that um both fig trees are doing well one's way bigger than the other but they were planted and bought at the same time and then um you come over here there's another peach tree there um actually i think that's a nectarine and then this is a nectarine and it's amazing how one planted at the same time bought at the same time about the same size look at the size of this little bush compared to the size of this thing and i got two nectarines off of it one year and that's all i've ever gotten and then of course there is two more peach trees there and i when i get my backhoe going or i get a wild hair up my tail i'm gonna have to get out here and start clearing that fence line to get that privy cut back it's invading on my tree space and then here you see i let it get away from me last year and this little bush grew up but i had two grapevines here and i got oh about seven or eight gallons worth of grapes off of it the year before last only got about a gallon or two last year and then i don't think it lived i think i didn't take care of it and i let it die so i may just have to re-straighten these posts and plant new plants here and then here as you can see all the vines and stuff this was actually just like that fence stood up scuffling vines on it and it was so freaking heavy it pulled the post over and everything and i had a chicken pen back here at one time so i've got a water line ran back to right over here and then there's a receptacle on a little post right up under the bushes here and then this fence so i've got to get this cleaned up and stood back up and pruned but this is scufflings or muscadines whatever you want to call them and inside those bushes right there you see the little white checkered uh, i forget what that's lattice there that was a uh, arched over arbor of lattice and i had scuffling vines planted on each end of that raised bed and up and over it i got a lot of scufflings off of that and then this other bed is twice as long well it's 16 foot this one's 16 but it's two eights i had things planted in the last eight foot and then this one was all thornless blackberries and i left them get away from me and the privies taken over so like i say it's a lot to do for one person but anyway um just thought i'd show y'all now when my ex was here my we're still very close friends and i love her to death but um when she was here she we had a big cedar tree inside that bunch there and we did the two by eights all the way around it and filled it with good soil and she had flowers and things planted in there and it was beautiful but it's more than i can take care of so now it's just a <laughs> raised bed of privy which is invasive and it will take over everything so so anyway it's a mess it's a mess but it's it's a work in progress just like i am thank god he's still working on me so anyway guys i hope um i inspired you a little bit today i hope you learned a little bit from me and if there's anything that i can show you or help you with please don't feel bad reach out to me my email's in the about me section if you haven't already done so please subscribe to the channel um, hit that like button and share when you can it helps me grow the channel and the more people we connect with the more people we help prepare the better this country is going to be when crap really does hit the fan and we all know it's coming so thank y'all very much remember the two things i always tell you jesus loves you and so do i y'all be safe